So these two uh, go for those two, those two lines there. That's the pi two piece. There's always going to be two for the pi, as far as we're concerned. For the pi star two piece, it's going to be the same thing, but just, just their counter exact opposites, where the phases don't match. So those two, the ones that are up, down, directly, and forward, backwards, but their phases don't match are the anti-bonding versions of the pi. Okay? All this, again, is without knowing the atom. Okay? So this you can draw beforehand. If you can remember how to do this, you're pretty set. The only thing that changes when you know the atom is you know the number of electrons. Okay? So, uh, on the test you won't have to draw what I have in blue. The orbitals, unless it's helpful for you for any reason. You'll remember, want to remember what's in green, these lines, and then these names you'll need to know. Exactly. Yeah. Sigma 2s star, pi 2p, that kind of stuff. You'll need to know those. Uh, so now, just to finish the picture, why doesn't somebody just give me an atom? Something smaller, than, neon or smaller? Fluorine. Fluorine? Okay, so now we're going to do this for fluorine, okay? All you do, remove this. I'm going to do F2, F, and F. We're going to use the same picture. Uh, do you want a charge on that that's not neutral? No. Okay, so we'll do it neutral. So fluorine, if you look at your periodic table, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So make sure you're still good with your electronic configuration. And so you just go and put 1s2, so you put two electrons here, you're going to put two here, and five here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So if you want to watch my pen to see how it goes, 1s2 on both sides. I'll do the middle last. 1s2, 2s2. 2p5. You fill them up singly first and then double them later or pair them second. So if you want to see it again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I filled on the electrons on the outside. The ones on the outside are called atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals. Everything in the middle that I'm about to do right now are called the molecular orbitals. So everything in the center are molecular orbitals. So what you do is you go picture by picture, and you fill in the electrons in the middle. So we'll do the 1s section first. There's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons total. So we're going to have a total of 4 electrons in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we'll go up to the 2s section. There's one, two, three, four electrons. So we're going to have four electrons in the middle. One, two, three, four. Okay, so far? Now, for the P's, there's five on each side. So that means a total of ten. So if these, if you don't know how to do, make sure you're watching carefully. One, two, and then three, four. And then I pair five, six. 7, 8, and then pair again, 9, 10. Okay, so there's 10. All I did is fill in. So notice, things in red are the only things that I will change in every single problem. Okay? Before, when we first started class, we were just doing this one. But then we're just building up. We're not going to go above neon, so you won't have to know anything above a 2p. Okay, so then common questions to ask after this. Number one is bond order. You go up to the highest orbital with electrons. In that case, that's the P's. And you take the number of electrons in bonding orbitals. That is, orbitals that don't have a star next to it. So we're going to do this top one, P. Two, four, six are all in bonding orbitals. Or we're always going to divide by two. 
Then you subtract from 6 the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals, that is, the ones with stars. So, 2, 4. This one's empty. Can you repeat that? You, you minus it with the ones with stars. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll say it all again. The ones that are bonding, ones without stars, sigma 2p, pi 2p, you add up all those electrons. There's 2, 4, 6 in our picture. Then you subtract it from the electrons in antibonding orbitals, that is, the ones with stars, superscripted. So, uh, you see those two, the pi 2p star, sigma 2p star, so it's 2, 4 electrons in that one. 6 minus 4 is 2, divided by 2 is... A bond order of one means it's a single bond, and this actually is one of the rare ones we can do a Lewis structure for. If you did the Lewis structure, you get this, and fluorine will have, F2 will have a single bond. So this matches nicely with Lewis, it's just there's a lot more problems you can do with MO theory than you can with Lewis. The other thing we'll ask is, is it paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Para means there's at least one unpaired electron. Diamagnetic means that there's none. And you only look at the center, pay no attention to the outsides, only look at the molecular orbital, and you're going to see everything in this example is paired. So we call this diamagnetic. It sounds opposite of the how it should be. Dia, whoops. Any questions about this one? I have Yeah, no problem. Um, when we did uh, the helium example yeah. in class, mm -hmm. you added the plus, so like it'd be actually possible to form that kind of... Theoretically, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you could ask for the... You could ask for like it non-charged, but we would just show that this can't be formed because the bond order would be zero, right? For helium, too, that's correct. But what about if... You say helium 2 minus. Helium 2 minus, uh, that would put one extra electron up here. Mm -hmm. So then if you do the bond order, you'll get a half. Okay, so, so it's possible. you just add an extra, like, the, two, the 2s thing up there, because you're going to have... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Whenever you have extra electrons, you have to put in the next orbitals. Okay. Yeah. I mean... You so, if we were talking about something like H2, I wouldn't have drawn all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's all there, they're just empty. Okay. Everything's always there. There's D orbitals here, too, and F orbitals. They're all empty, though. Uh -huh. Yeah, so those all exist. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you have a question on this one? Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, I was told to turn these in. Thanks. Yeah, what's your question? Um, so, for the exam, what we need to know is everything in green and in... Uh, and in blue, and then everything in red is what we're going to have to kind of provide based on what element we get. Right. Uh, maybe I'll say it a different way. Uh, in blue, we usually don't ask you to draw this. So oh, that's okay. just, just... I explain that so that you see where the picture comes from. Okay. Otherwise, it's kind of a black box mystery. Still, it's probably somewhat mysterious. But it's more mysterious if I just, like, know this line structure draw this <laughs> and copy me. <laughs> so, uh, I just made it slightly less mysterious. Uh, I think it's a little easier to learn that way, even though it's still painful. You'll need to know how to name each energy level for the more the orbitals. Uh, and you'll need to be able to fill in what I drew in red, the electrons, depending on what molecule is oh. given. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So cover this one? No question. Yeah. Um, for this case, do you have have to put the sigma 2p antibond orbital, or energy level? Sigma 2p star, that yeah. one. That one has to be drawn, okay. yeah. For, uh, even though it's not filled, everything that is for the particular orbital, even if it's not empty, needs to be drawn there, yeah. Because it is, in bonding, would be easily accessed, because that's where you'd put a next electron, if you got, if it picked up one for whatever reason. So, yeah, definitely. You wouldn't have to, if you said had helium-2, it would just fill up this one, you wouldn't have to draw the next one. Because that would be the next set of orbitals up. So, is that okay? Mm -hmm.